My name is Frank Diemert. I am a technical specialist for the company within the Civil 3D group. Today, we're going to talk about the Sheet Set Manager, use the right tool at the right time for project workflows. Topics we're going to cover today are what are sheet sets and the Sheet Set Manager, anatomy of a Sheet Set Manager, a new project workflow, creating a new sheet set file, the anatomy of plot sheet drawing templates, anatomy of intelligent reference blocks, custom fields, and managing sheets. What are sheet sets and the sheet set manager? The sheet set manager manages the sheet set file, just like you would with a file cabinet. Um, the sheet set file is a data file, which is a .dst file, and that manages the sheet sets. Your sheet sets are basically an assembly of all the plot sheets in your project. Where do you find the sheet set, the SSM or sheet set manager? You find it by just simply typing in sheet set or SSM on the command line. On the ribbon, you can go to your view tab to the palettes panel and find the sheet set manager. It's that little rolled up sheet set in there. If no drawings are open, look at the quick access toolbar for the SSM icon. The anatomy of a of sheet set manager. Uh, when you open up the sheet tab, um, the sheet set, you will see a sheet list tab. This basically lists all your plot sheets, layouts, or paper space. So when you click on one of them, it'll actually open the drawing up and go from there. The anatomy of the sheet set manager. Um, you got your sheet view tab. So it shows all the sheet views within that tab. So it shows your views or your viewports. Then you have your model view tab. In the model view, you can see the model space views, XREF base drawings, etc. Set up for new project workflow. The model tab view is your base drawing, as most people know. You can create a new view. by simply adding it to the sheet set manager. And then you create a plot sheet. You can simply drag and drop views on a sheet to create that plot. How does the sheet set file get information? It starts with your title block. DWG. Then it moves on to your project template DWT. Your sheet set files property from the .dst file. And then it continues on for your new sheet, which you can name and number right there for the new plot sheet drawing. Anatomy of a plot sheet drawing templates, types of fields for title block drawing, sheet to sheet changes, sheet numbers, sheet titles, etc. Types of fields for plot sheet template dot DWT, project to project, which is your project name, project number, etc. And use M text fields versus attribute fields. Examples of types of fields. You can place on model space on the title block drawing, which is your current, current sheet set project number and current, current sheet set project name. I got a little dyslexic with that one. Uh, place on paper space a plot sheet project template, like for instance, your current sheet number or your current sheet title. The anatomy of intelligent reference blocks. You can create attribute fields, then make blocks within the plot sheet project template. Just insert a field, create it in the sheet set placeholder or within the sheet set. 
Example of types of fields. Sheet set place holder and view number. Sheet set place holder view title. Sheet set place holder sheet number. Sheet set place holder viewport scale. She set sheet set <laughs> she shed sheet set placeholder and view number and your sheet set placeholder sheet number. You can create custom fields that require matching a custom matching custom properties in the sheet set file properties. You got the current sheet custom sheet number of total and the current sheet set custom total number of sheets. In your custom sheet set properties, you can add you can add different uh, custom properties and custom uh, attributes. This is your custom sheet set property dialog box, where you can add your client city, client name, and who the project is run, being run by. Field tips and hints, attribute blocks, wig out when using too many fields. If you put any fields on its own layer and lock them in the template, you, by default, the fields drawn by, checked by, et cetera, are sheet specific. If you include a date submittal field, you'll need to create a custom field. And then managing sheets. You can move the order of plot sheets. You can separate sheets by discipline. You can remove sheets, you can rename and renumber plot sheets, and you can close the sheet set file. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to walk through some of this stuff. As you can see, I have a template already set up. This is our basic template, civil 3D template with a 24 by 36 sheet. And we have all the attributes pre-set up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to create. We're going to learn how to create a new sheet set. We'll be starting with an example sheet set. You'll browse to the location where it is. Click next. Choose a, space, a place where you're going to store your sheet set, be it a project folder, or in this case, I've got it just in my sheet set folder. And click next. And as you can see, I've got a preview of my new sheet set. General sheets, civil sheets, survey sheets, planning, architectural and structure. And with that, I've created my new sheet set. Within this sheet set, now you can go in here and, and name this sheet. You could have also renamed it within the, uh, while you were creating it. But if you just simply go into the properties dialog, you can name the sheet set here. This gives you the setup for the, uh, where all the description of your sheet set manager, where all your blocks and callouts are set, the page setup overrides the sheet creation, your client name, developer name, who it's drawn by, the jurisdiction, and all the information you need. Edit custom properties. You can come in here and create new, new properties. Within this dialogue, dialogue box, you can add or delete any of these uh, styles in here. You can simply add by clicking add create a new name for the property and what the default value of that property is and where you want to have, have it owned within the sheet set or not. We'll walk through this in a little more detail here soon. But now I want to start out um, rather than just uti utilizing the one that I've 
just created. I'm going to have one that I already have. So you can come in here and you can close this sheet set by simply right clicking on, opening up the dialog box and click close sheet set. Now again, I've already started one. So I'm going to come in here and open one that I already have. This is our ATG training DST. <clears throat> And as you can see, now I have opened that file. I've got my general sheets, my civil sheets, my existing conditions, erosion and sediment control, land development, utilities, paving and drainage. You can simply add these uh, subsets and sets by simply clicking here. Like for instance, if I want to add a new subset to the overall uh, dialog, I would come in here, I would select the subset properties. Create that new subset and we'll call it MEP for the scheduling. Say okay. And then when we flop back into our sheet set manager, we can see now we have an MEP uh, sheet set set up for the subset. We can drag these and put them in any order we want them. If we want MEP up under the general sheets, then we can just simply drag it and drop it and move it up there. Same thing within the subsets within civil sheets. We can move these to any location you want. Now, maybe you might want erosion and sediment control before the existing conditions. You just simply move it and drop it. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open up a drawing that I have created. It really don't have anything in it, but it's set up for my sheet set. And again, you can see I have all my attributes already set up in here. on a 24 by 36 inch border. What I want to do to start here is I'm going to come into my um, properties on my overall sheet set. And I'm going to update those custom attributes. And I'm going to start out with my client. We'll just call him everyone's let's do this in cap. Everyone's engineering. The developer. We'll just call this Tom's development. I'm going to be drawn by myself. Typically, you would put this um, per sheet. So that can be added as the sheet. So let's leave that off in here for now. The jurisdiction will use my local uh, jurisdiction, which is Lee County. Project address line, we'll just call this one, two, three. Any street. We'll put this in my home city. And again, we'll make that Lee County.
our project manager will put in his initials. We'll just call him just another boss. The project name is going to be new to a subdivision. Our project will just make a one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're just going to simply say OK for now. As you can see, it don't appear that anything is updated. But if I do a regen all REA, it still hasn't updated. So what's going on here is our attributes are not mapped. How you map these is you just come in here to your MTEX editor. You highlight it, right click again, edit the field. This dialog box is going to give us sheet set. We're going to go into the sheet set. And our first one is our job number, project number. We're going to say OK. OK. And that's funny because it worked a minute ago. I know what's going on. We come in here, we go to properties. We've got a project number right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That project name. We're going to take it out of here and put it here. and say OK. Now we should be able to do an REA. And as you can see, now we have our project number. We're going to have to come in here and create this. And text edit again. Make sure it's highlighted. Edit field. Sheet set. Project name. New addition to a subdivision. This one, we're going to come in here and edit this again. Typically, we would have this already done in our template, but this is a good uh, chance for me to show you how to do this. We're going to do a plot date. We're going to use that and say OK. Now when we plot this, it'll give us a date on, on the sheet when we plot it. And it'll update automatically. Jurisdiction, I like that again. Edit field. Sheet set. Add the jurisdiction, automatically updates. Drawing by. Under the sheet set. Okay. Drawing by isn't in here because that's going to be under your sheet view. And I grabbed the wrong one. So we got to come in here and we got to take that and unclick everything. Yeah, and now that I got it linked, it won't unlink until I link it to something else. So let's go in here and go to MTEX edit. Edit this field. Sheet set. Project manager. Say OK. There's our just another boss. Again, under client.
create that client click OK everyone engineering and under our project Oops, wrong field. under the developer. That field. Line one. Line two. can continue on and add more sheets if we want. Within the sheet file, within the sheet set manager, you can also come in here. And what's nice about this is you can actually set up your publish settings, manage your page setups, and set your PDF to publish options, your DWF publish options. And also you can come in here and set your um, if you want to set it right directly to uh, uh, your printers. First things we'll do is we'll come in here with a manage setup manager. We'll modify this one because I've already created, as you can see, I'm creating a DWG to PDF, the plot style, the sheet size, the layout, and the plot scale. Another thing you might want to realize is under your publish command, when you do your PDF publish options, you can come into here and you can set your DPIs. I don't like to use anything more than a 300 to 150. It takes too long to plot. You want a multi-sheet file, include your layer information. Say OK. And again, now we have a complete setup. Our sheets are ready to plot. What's nice about this is if we also, if we want to add another template or another uh, tab to this drawing file, I like to add it from my template. It lets you choose the layouts from your, your template. As you can see in my template, I have multiple uh, title blocks. I'm going to add another 24 by 36. And while we're in here, I'm also going to come in here and show you how to add these files to this, this set. Let's say, for instance, we're using this for the land development set. We're going to import a layout as a sheet. 
You browse for your drawing. The drawing that I'm uh, browsing to is this one. We'll say open. I'm going to add the 24 by 36 and just import that one into the sheet set manager. Now you can see under land development, I have one sheet created. It's locked because I do have it open. You'll always see that. If it's unopened by anybody, it, there will not be a lock on it. I can rename and number this sheet. By bringing up this dialog box, I can call this one C100. Give the layout a name of C100. Give it the sheet title. Which is the new edition. Do a subdivision. And then simply click OK. Now I'm going to save this drawing because since I've done this, I've added this new layout. And you can simply add that new layout. Or you can come back in here and right click and import it from a sheet again. Browse for the drawing, go to the actual drawing, open it up. And as you see, you've got your layout and your layout to 24 by 36. That was the new one I added. I'm going to simply import that one that I checked. And as you can see, now I have that new one in here. I'm going to come in here and rename and number that again. Change this layout name to C101. And number it C101. And as you can see, it automatically changed my tab. Now I can come into here and it should be updating everything as it's needed. Got our sheet number, sheet name, and this guy's not Lincoln. And there we set. Again, maybe I put this one in the wrong place. Maybe I wanted this one under utilities. I can bring that, drag it down here to utilities and actually move it to that new box. There are many things we can do with this sheet set manager. When we publish, if we publish to PDF, this is gonna publish every sheet in the set. Or you can simply just highlight the sheets you want to publish and publish them to PDF. If we run a publish to PDF, you'll get a place where you can stay, uh, stage it, which could be your project folder, or maybe some of you <clears throat> like to just put it on your desktop or in a, in a folder on your hard drive until you can check it before you put it in a project folder. You just say simply select and it runs in the background. That printed pretty quick. Okay, I got an idea. Let's show you how to add attributes. 
here we've got our revisions. We can simply come in here and add text. Multi-line text. I like to use multi-line text. Some others don't. We'll center that. We'll just give it a XXX. Under description, I'll add some more multi-line text. We'll center that. And just put in XXXXXX, just as a placeholder. We'll go in here and add a date field. and say, okay. While we have this, we can highlight it. And right click again. We're gonna insert a field this time. First thing we gotta do is we gotta come into our sheet set manager. Under properties, edit custom properties. And again, we're gonna add one. We're gonna call this one rev number. Add a value. Use, use the sheet set as the owner. We're going to add another one. We're going to call it the descri rev description. Just give it a value. Okay, and add one more. Call it rev date. And give that a value of and say okay. Now that we've got that all added, you can see that it's in here. We have our rev number, rev description, and rev date. So if we add that rev number is 01, our description is and our rev date will be today's date. And we'll say okay. Now we still have to come in here and get these attributes lined up. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna insert the field. It's owned by the sheet set. We're looking for our rev number. We're gonna say, okay. Another thing I wanna do is make sure I put this all on the same layer that I have the others. Say, okay on that one, bring this one in. Change that to red. Insert field. This is gonna be the rev description. Say okay. This one, change the layer color to red. Insert field. And again, this one's gonna be the revision date. You say, okay. Now what's nice about that is since I don't have this field in my other drawing tab, I can just simply copy this with a control C or come up here to edit, copy with base point, grab it here, 
go to C101 and paste that in there. Another thing I don't kind of like about this is my text is a little smaller than others. Need to bring that up to size. And again, typically you would add this into your template, your drawing template. So this would be already done and it would automatically be updated. When you come into your drawing file. So it would automatically be set to the settings that you want. The revision would already be there. You don't even have to put the XXXs as place markers. I just wanted them in there so I could show you.